How will the Denver Broncos use both Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams against the Seattle Seahawks in Week 1? Monday Night Football. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos their first listen of the day every single day. Free and available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format or whether you watch us on YouTube. Do us a favor, go ahead, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content coverage, and more every single day all year long, from the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos beat reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Benger. He's the site expert, predominantlyorange.com. All right, Sarah, you know what? We engaged Broncos country on Twitter, and we were asking them for some of their mailbag questions. And, you know, we got some really good questions in, but I felt like we could really formulate an entire show based on how the Broncos can maybe utilize both Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. I think this is a big question that many Broncos fans still have is who's going to get the start? Who's going to get the carries in the red zone? Who's going to get the carries from midfield in? And I think it's a great conversation to have here because right now it's currently unknown approaching the week one opener on Monday Night Football. Yeah, Broncos fans eager to find out the answer to this question. Fantasy football, you know, players and managers all eager to find out the answer to this question. I think everybody really is kind of excited to see. We heard Melvin Gordon's comments earlier this offseason, Cody, that he kind of felt maybe like the Broncos wanted Javante Williams to be the number one back in this offense. But what does that mean? What does that look like? What does that mean for in terms of their touches, the percentages? Last year, it was roughly 50-50 split. I mean, if if Javante had played every game, if Melvin had played every single game, I mean, it might have been exactly 50-50, but this is a new coaching staff. Obviously, we can look back at Nathaniel Hackett, how he operated in Buffalo, Jacksonville, Green Bay. He likes to use the two-back approach, so I don't think these guys are going to be hurting for touches one way or another, but it's going to be fascinating to see how they're utilized within this new offense. I think that's going to be a key to watch here, and just want to give a shout-out to Big Mike, at It's Big Mike, for the question, asking us, what's the running back split going to look like week one? Will we get a taste of a Javante Williams-led backfield, or will we still see a lot of Melvin Gordon? So we're going to focus our entire show today on answering these questions right here, Mike. So thank you very much. So let's start things off here with Javante Williams. How are the Broncos you Utilize Javante against the Seattle Seahawks. And I think the question is, is Javante Williams going to get the start? And right now, Sarah, the expectation and the belief inside the building is that Javante Williams will be the starter for the Broncos here at running back. And even Melvin Gordon has acknowledged this. But these two have a very, very close relationship with one another. I don't think it impacts them. There, I don't think there's any animosity inside the locker room, contrary to what I think some fans believe. And, and unfortunately, I think that there's been this negative narrative that's been painted about Melvin Gordon that simply isn't true. So I hope we can address that along this season here for Broncos country, but Williams will get to start for the Broncos on Monday Night Football. is expected to see the first carry, but outside of that, I, I think the expectation is that in this offense here with Russell Wilson, with obviously Justin out and up in the box, with Nathaniel Hackett calling plays, Javante's probably going to see a heavy dose. I don't know if they're going to do a series to series, but I think a heavy dose of Javante Williams will be dialed up a little bit, especially from when we talk about the 20 in to once you get to midfield, what's the rotation going to look like? I mean, how often are the Broncos going to spell Javante Williams for Melvin Gordon and vice versa? Are they going to have that 50-50 split? I think right now the expectation is heavy dosage of Javante Williams, which I think makes a lot of people in Broncos country really, really happy. But I know there's another dynamic that you want to see Javante Williams presented with when he's thrown into the mix for this Denver Broncos team on Monday. That's right. I'm excited to see more of Javante Williams in the passing game. And I know we got to see plenty of that last year, quite a bit of it. He's obviously very good as a pass protector. He's very good as a receiver. But I really want to see more of Javante Williams out in space. I think that one of the things that we had called for a lot on last year's show was a little bit more involvement from the backs in the passing game in terms of, hey, where's the screen game? You know, are, are the Broncos going to start executing the, the the running back screen game at, at all? I mean, we never really got to see that with Pat Schirmer's offense. I wonder if we will get to see it with Nathaniel Hackett's offense. And for Javante Williams, 
that means that you're really highlighting and amplifying arguably his best trait and maybe not even it's it may not even be arguable Cody just his ability to break tackles in the open field to make guys miss or or just run over guys you know he just flat out carry defenders down the field just ask the Baltimore Ravens about that but Javante Williams that's his best skill and so it's not just about okay well in the in the flow of a game can he go out there and, and win between the tackles can he be a great runner between the tackles can he break off a big run off tackle or I think you really got to make sure you get him involved intentionally in the passing game to make sure that you're getting him the opportunity to do what he does best which is make people miss in space not just with elusiveness but with his explosiveness with his tackle breaking ability his his ability in the open field to just kind of see those extra yardage and, and really go after it and get it I mean he can do those kinds of things so seeing that involvement from him in the passing game I think is going to be first of all I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch and second of all I think it's just smart on the part of the Broncos offensive staff to really get him involved that can just help your offense like you said between the 20s that's going to be a thing where I think if your offense is stagnant get the ball to Javante Williams in space and let him work well and I don't think it's like a, an unknown either right I think that if George Payton's coaching staff which they have done they went to the film remember the game against the Chargers last year at home where Teddy Bridgewater dumped it out into the flat for Javante Williams he made a defender miss got skinny up the sideline tiptoed up the sideline cut back inside for about a 44 45 yard gain as a receiver I mean he's a hard guy to bring down I would hate to be in the one-on-one -on -one open field against him because he's either going to run you over or he could make you miss I think he's very deceptive in his ability to make guys miss not a lot of people talk about that when it comes to Javante Williams so I would love to see Javante or Pookie get involved in the passing game a little bit more especially if defense is really focused on taking away the receivers and you have a, a heavy blitz team well you know what how do you counteract the blitz you dump it off to your tail back quick in the flat and you let him make a move in space I think they can do that not only can they do it with Javante but they can do that with another running back maybe even two running backs that are on this roster we're going to talk about coming up here in just a moment how the Broncos may utilize Melvin Gordon against the Seattle Seahawks in the week one Monday night football opener to kick off the NFL regular season but before we do that let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of show it's a good friends over there at prize picks and prize picks means that daily fantasy sports is done right now they have player projections on almost every single player in the National Football League and not to mention other sports as well you can just choose and look at the projections going into a week one regular season matchup will this player get more or will they get less than what their prize picks projections project for them to get there so how does it work you get to pick two to five players and if they will go score more or less than their prize picks projection you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections that are available. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They're safe and fast withdrawals, and they're currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So what you can do is you can download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code locked on. So if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, prize picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. How might the Denver Broncos utilize Melvin Gordon in this offense here in 2022? Well, we have the season opener with the Seattle Seahawks coming up on Monday Night Football to kick off week one of the NFL action. Thank you so much, everybody in Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day in your favorite podcast and platform, whether you watch us on YouTube. We appreciate you so much for tuning in to the show. We talked about Javante Williams and really how the expectation in this offense is he's going to be the primary back. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be designed offensively for Javante to be the feature guy, the guy that's going to be in the premier spotlight, I feel like, this season. And that leaves kind of the veteran kind of under the radar, very reliable option in Melvin Gordon, kind of on the outside looking at, I think, perception-wise. But he's also going to have a big role in this offense for the Broncos this season. Now, I think the expectation is that when the Broncos get into short yardage situations, we're talking like third downs, uh, you know, even at midfield in the red zone, don't be surprised if we see Melvin Gordon because, Sarah, where has Melvin thrived as a rusher for this Broncos team? I think anywhere you get close to midfield and you get into the red zone, or as Nathaniel Hackett likes to call it, the gold zone, he's been efficient. I mean, six red zone touchdowns last year for the Broncos. I, I think that this is where we'll see him. He's not going to be the primary back, but his role is still going to be just as important and just as big. 
It is. I mean, he's one of the best at scoring touchdowns in the entire NFL over the last six years, right? I mean, when you look at running backs and different skill players, Melvin Gordon is right up there in terms of scoring consistently. And, and he's had, what, 20 touchdowns in his first two years with the Denver Broncos. So we know that he has kind of just that innate ability to get in the end zone. And the Broncos obviously know that, right? I mean, they brought him back for a reason. They brought him back. And, and I think Melvin Gordon gets a raw deal, Cody. I think a lot of people maybe question just because, well, because he's like a 230-pound back or whatever. Maybe he's a little bit more clunky or not as fast but then you look back and he had one of the 20 fastest plays of the entire nfl for any ball carrier last season so he's still explosive he's still got speed i think that just the way the game is nowadays the way that play it just seems like things are changing like times have changed cody where backs and i mean even running backs right they can take care of their bodies in such a way to be able to play the game at a high level much longer than it used to be even if a running back's shelf life is typically once you're 30 it's kind of done that's kind of what it seems like right but here melvin gordon is pushing 30 years old almost and and he's still explosive he's still very effective on all three downs and again i'll point to this you look back at Nathaniel Hackett's Jacksonville days, his Buffalo days, his Green Bay days. You can point to any number of duos that he had at the running back position and just how important it was for him, whether he was the offensive coordinator or whether he was just helping with the game plan, whatever the case may be. You could tell that the two back approach is super critical to this offense. And so I think we can expect huge things from Melvin Gordon. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be every single drive. Hey, once we get to the 20, you know, Melvin's coming in or anything like that. I don't think that's what we're necessarily saying, right? It could be a series here. It could be a series there. It could be a couple plays here. Javante needs a breather. Melvin comes in. But I think Melvin is going to play a huge, huge role for this offense in terms of helping the Broncos with their offensive efficiency inside the red zone, not just as a runner, but as a receiver. And as we saw last season, Cody, Melvin was the more efficient of the two running backs in terms of running between the tackles. So I think that's that's one of those areas where it's just, hey, the, the biggest question that I have, and you can tell me what you think about this, Cody. The biggest question that I have in terms of Melvin Gordon's involvement is, if the running game goes a little bit stagnant with Javante Williams out on the field, do the Broncos then kind of lean on Melvin Gordon and trust him a little bit more for lack of a better term? Do you trust the veteran back a little bit more because he's more proven? He's got that, you know, he, he does have that three down ability. That's kind of what I'm interested to see is if the running game gets off to a cold start with Javante, do they kind of start leaning more on Melvin Gordon? Well, and I think that's a great question too, because I think, Anytime there's a situation like that, I think sometimes fans can look into it. Oh, this guy's not doing good. I think it depends on how a defense plays you, right? And look, I mean, when you see Javante Williams, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't help but imagine that defenses won't try to stack the box against Denver. And so I think for Melvin, one of the things that we've talked about where he really thrives is his vision, right? For Javante, that's an area where he can improve. Now, when you go from the inside zone blocking scheme to the outside zone, outside zone sets up the cutback, right? The inside zone is literally the offensive line will be blocking. They'll, you know, if you got a one technique, which is, you know, a defensive lineman lined up on the one of the shoulders of the center, that guy's going to double team initially and then work up to the play side, the nearest play, uh, play side linebacker that's going to be responsible for trying to shoot that gap there. Really, that's where I think we saw Javante struggle a little bit is because in the inside zone, it's just hit the hole. Well, when defenses knew what hole you're going to run to, they, they filled it or they slanted towards it. So I think that there's a new dynamic with the outside zone scheme, which, you know, hey, we're going to stretch outside. And if the cutback's there, get skinny and take it. Can Javante master that this year? I think Melvin's got that in his repertoire where I think he can help. But even if Javante struggles, not necessarily he struggles, if the offense struggles to, to run the football well when Javante's in to start, it doesn't mean that Javante and the offense aren't good. It just means that the defense is playing them a little bit differently. And maybe, maybe they could rely on a guy like Melvin Gordon because of what he's able to do. And it just his versatility, I would say to maybe get them out of a hole if they do find themselves in one. I think that is something that definitely needs to be touched on. But there's also another running back that's on this roster, Sarah, that I feel like we'll definitely have to talk about. But even more so, we're going to dive deeper into the question, how can the Broncos offense thrive with Javante and Melvin's roles this upcoming season, plus sprinkling in an additional running back? And we're talking about Mike Boone. We're going to get to that, folks, coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Bilt Bar, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. And if you haven't tried Bilt Bar Puff shit, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? That is a brand new flavor. Ready? 
delicious, indulgent cookie dough. Covered in chocolate, that's right, Built has done it again. So let me introduce you to your new favorite. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And all of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you because cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. So make sure you check it out today by going to built.com. You can also see the amazing original flavors that they have. They have nine flavors to be exact that were originally started when Built was created. And you can go check that out at built.com. And once you do that, and when you go to checkout, use promo code LOCKEDON15. Once again, it's promo code LOCKEDON15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKEDON15. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, we're going to analyze and dive deeper into how the Broncos offense can thrive with Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon's roles this upcoming season with a little bit of sprinkle of Mike Boone. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, whether you watch us on YouTube. If you're a brand new viewer or listener of the show, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more. All right, sir, continue on on today's episode of the show. We're all excited that it is Broncos game week. In our last video, talking about the preparation, maybe some early projections as to who Denver needs to pay attention to on Seattle offense and defense. We've got a lot of salty Seahawks fans here. So, you know, you can just tell that a lot of Seahawks fans are perusing through YouTube, looking at Broncos content. How weird of a behavior is that? I mean, it's just, it's odd to me. But anyways, yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll focus on Monday Night Football. We'll focus on everything leading up to it. And I can't wait. Monday night, if the Broncos come out and they win against the Seattle Seahawks, I'm going to go back to a lot of these comments. And I'm going to respond in a very kind of nice way. I'm not going to be passive aggressive. I'm going to be nice because some of the comments we get, man, just absolutely crazy. Seahawks fans, get together. Be better than that. Don't be the jealous, bitter ex, all right? Anyways, outside of that, talking about the Broncos rushing attack here, Sarah, and how they can thrive with both Javante and Melvin's roles, I think one of the things we can – identify here with this offense if the Broncos can establish the run early you can wear the Seahawks down and you know what happens if you have points let's say Denver's able to get off to a two a two score lead right 10 points 14 points whatever it may be if you run the ball effectively you can run out the clock and you're going to force Seattle to have to be a little bit more desperate you're going to force them to have to throw the football which kind of seemed like the scenario that many defenses tried to put the Broncos offense in Last season, I think if the Broncos can get the run game going with Javante and Melvin, I think some good things can happen for this football team. Well, absolutely, Cody. And and I realize, and you realize, we all realize, it's not 2005 anymore. But at the same time, I think the same principles can apply here in 2022 because back in 2005, you remember that offense with Jake Plummer at the helm and, and Mike Anderson and Tatum Bell, that two-headed rushing attack where – I mean, teams couldn't stop the Broncos offense really on a weekly basis because of the fact that they could run at will. And when they could run at will, then you had Jake Plummer throwing the ball up to every receiver possible, the tight ends. I mean, everybody out there was making an impact because of the fact that they're able to run the ball so well, they can push the ball vertically. I think that's what's ex I think that's exactly the recipe for this kind of a game against the Seattle Seahawks. Again, like we said, this is an NFL team. They're full of professionals. So for any Seahawks fans listening to this, we're not we understand what it's like to be downplayed every single week when you get you have somebody coming in asking you questions about your roster or how bad your team is. And 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 it kind of sucks. It kind of feels it just feels terrible going into a game week feeling like that. But I'm not saying the Seahawks stink, Cody. And I think that people in the comments need to understand that you and I are probably about as politically correct as it gets when it comes to projecting a game <laughs> like this. But I do feel like the Broncos have the upper hand in terms of this matchup. When you talk about establishing the ground game with these two running backs and what it can do as far as the overall effect of the game, like you mentioned, if the Broncos can run the ball well, if they can eat up clock, if they can push the ball vertically and have a good balance offensively, it forces the Seattle Seahawks to have to throw throw the ball a lot more, which plays into the Broncos defensive strength, right? I mean, rushing the passer, picking off the pass, I mean, picking off balls from Patrick Sertan, Justin Simmons. We hope Ronald Darby has a career high in interceptions this year. I think everything kind of plays into the Broncos hands. If they're able to run the ball, that's exactly what I think they're going to do. Cody with Javante and Melvin, just wearing down the, the Seattle Seahawks defense. I mean, again, it's a, a lot of young players on that defensive side, a lot of talent, but a lot of young players for Seattle and a, a Broncos offense that has two backs that are ready and chomping at the bit to go eat.
Well, I think the biggest question, too, that we have right now is what will the balance look like between the run and the pass? Like, will the Broncos be 50-50 run pass? Will it be 75-25 pass run? I mean, that's something we have no answers to. But kind of going into this offense, as you mentioned, going back to what Nathaniel Hackett loves the most, like envisioning, you said, the Mike Shanahan style of offense, to, you know, with the John Elway's, the deep balls to Eddie McCaffrey and Rod Smith and those guys, the, you know, pounding the rock with Terrell Davis, the way that he mentioned when he was hired by the Broncos to be their next head coach. For me, if you get this offense rolling with these two running backs where you're just pounding it down the throats of the Seattle Seahawks, you're going to get them to tighten up a little bit, which a lot their secondary is going to have to play back, which means that play action, here you go. This is where you can really attack and exploit any defense, not just the Seahawks defense, any defense in the National Football League. And having a very good balanced rushing attack makes it very hard for opposing defenses to find balance and solidarity within themselves. And it's very, very tough to adjust to that. And I think that's where the advantage could play into Denver if they do in fact have success run the ball what about Mike Boone though Sarah I mean, he's a guy that thrived in the preseason was a guy that was hard to bring down was a guy that was just making everybody miss but he also offers some value as well not just as a rusher but also as a pass catcher out of the backfield so I think a big question that is unknown we talk so much about Melvin and Javante should we also be including Mike Boone? If we're talking about like a you know a hundred splits, are we going to go seventy five Javante, twenty five to you know Melvin, or if we're going to add three other guys into it, is it going to be 50, 25, 25 with these guys? I have no idea, but I think that with Mike Boone's role on special teams, he could be a secret weapon that maybe Nathaniel Hackett unleashes, maybe not in week one, but maybe at some point down the road. Oh, he for sure. I think absolutely, Cody. If after what we saw in the preseason, I, I wonder if there's anybody on offense besides Montrell Washington and Mike Boone that really earned the opportunity for more touches in the regular season mix. Certainly, we'll see them hand the ball to guys like Montrell. Hopefully, Jerry Judy after all of it. Wouldn't that be kind of ironic? The first game of the year, they hand the ball to Jerry Judy on one of those reverse <laughs> plays or whatever. KJ Hamler. That would be that would be funny. I mean, that would be kind of an homage to know like, hey, they watched last year's film they're making a little bit of a joke here uh at least for me it would be that would be but a middle I think finger to Mike pat schirmer <laughs> yes right and maybe he maybe he kind of needs that who knows I, I but with mike boone i can already see the tweets coming in cody I feel like Mike Boone is going to get a couple touches and then everybody on Twitter is going to be like, Mike Boone needs more involvement in the offense. Mike Boone needs to be running back too. Oh, I can already yeah. see it happening because I, I just, I know that it's going to, it's going to be what it is because Mike Boone, I think is going to maximize the touches that he's given. And, and I think he's going to be one of those players like for the Broncos. I'm trying to think back to if they had anybody and now that my brain is on 2005, Cody, I'm trying to think back to if they had somebody on the roster who was kind of like that. But I think there's definitely going to be an opportunity for him to go out there and be that guy that everybody's like, I want to see more of Mike Boone. I want to see more of this guy because he's going to go out there and whether it's the passing game, the running, or the, the running game, the kickoff return game, he's going to maximize his touches. He's going to show that and he brings a different element to this offense, even though I mentioned that Melvin Gordon hasn't lost, you know, a lot of speed or explosiveness. I think Mike Boone has a different gear to him when you're talking about that vert that long speed down the field. And so I think when he comes out onto the field, we're going to see that and fans are going to be all about it. So to me, Cody, Mike Boone is going to be one of those guys that fans are going to be clamoring for more of every single week. Every time he touches the ball, everybody's going to be saying, get Mike Boone the ball more, make Mike Boone running back too. I can already see it <laughs> oh, happening. No. I could see it too. And the moment you said, it, I was like, yep, I can definitely see that happening. Especially, you know, I think that if you have three good backs, it's good. It's not like the quarterback analogy where they say if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. I think if you have three running backs, you have a ton. So we're going to make that a little bit of a popular mantra to say this upcoming season. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. What you can expect throughout the rest of this week, we'll have Crossover Thursday with Corbin Smith, host of the Locked On Seahawks podcast, breaking down the biggest story for each team, looking at key matchups to identify, and also talking about maybe some outcomes, what can influence the outcome of the game. You'll get that on Thursday's episode, Lockdown Broncos. But we're going to have more buildup for you as the Broncos get back on the practice field this week in preparation for Monday's game against the Seattle Seahawks. Make sure you tune into Lockdown Broncos so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content coverage and more.